and public affairs analyst uh, Habib Salah who joins me now as we discuss more on last year's October 20 NSAS protests. Good to have you join us. Thank you for having me. So let's look at this from um, an international dimension because again uh, the international community did have a role to play in terms of you know lending their voice to the call for the the end or to the or the stop to police brutality for example we heard from um someone like the former secretary of state in the u.s hillary clinton um joe biden also did say something although he was not the president at the time and uh, we heard from you know international celebrities anthony joshua footballers musical stars how much of this do you think impacted or how much of impact do you think this had on the protest itself well, um, those that you mentioned and the views, the comments they passed concerning it, answers did give the movement um, global attention. Um, but over time, we've seen that um, irrespective of this attention, once the Nigerian government is um, has resolved to carry out whatever it is they, they plan to do, it barely affects them, the, uh, the execution of their plan. Um, it did put it on a I mean, global stage. People started talking about it all over the world, but nothing has changed. You know, mm -hmm. the pressure that we thought that may have added to, you know, the, the clamor for um, the, uh, a much more um, a safer environment for people in Nigeria it hasn't really changed. And we've suddenly seen footages from the protest today where innocent protesters are still were arrested. So nothing has really changed. Hmm. Uh, and do, do you think that, um, uh, let's look at the, the role that, that social media played, because we know that this protest morphed from social media and became street demonstrations. And some time ago, the, the uh, Minister of Information and Culture did say that um, the, that's one of the reasons, the role that Twitter played in the NSAS protest was one of the reasons uh, the, the blo social blogging site was, uh, the micro -blogging, blogging site rather, was, uh, um, was suspended. What do you make of the impact of, of, of or, or the interference in court, as the federal government will call it, of the social media giant? So, you see, um, we cannot run away from the um, impact social media has had on, um, you know, civil protests and um, demonstrations across the world. Um, I think there is this palpable fear of uh, a reorganization of Nigerian youths because the movement last year, you know, showed strength. It, it represented a resolution on the part of the youths of Nigeria to fight for what they truly deserve. And so um, it was not, I think it must have been a calculated attempt to suspend um, Twitter before um, this um, memorial that we're having today and also, um, I mean, going into the future. So the Nigerian government resolving to do that has shown the fear that they have for the people. And so I would say that we should continue to you know, push for reforms that would guarantee our safety in Nigeria. Uh, basically, our rights, because, uh, yeah, I mean, we don't even have the, the right to, to protest um, mm. peacefully. And do you think that the reputation of the country or the leadership of the country um, was impacted by this internationally? Um, we, we know that some of these things are, are measured by several indices, for example, would we'll have the corruption index, would we'll have the human rights uh, index as well. Uh, do you think that our reputation did take a hit because of this protest and how leadership responded to it? To be honest with you, yes, it did take a hit, but also you need to understand how you know, some of the Western countries operate. It's basically business interests for them. So if um, those interests are still well protected, there may be one or two, um, you know, um, talks about, you know, the abuse of human rights and all that. But still, if once they have a ben uh, beneficial uh, uh, relationship with, with the country, they will continue. So on the part of human rights, yes, Amnesty and all those other organizations may, you know, churn out numbers and reports by the end of the day, what does it come to if it's still happening? Nothing. Mm. And that's the point, whether it is still happening. And that, that's the thing, because there are people who, who still report this over and over again across the country. For example, there was just a report from Kogi State. Um, we had the report from Akwa Ibom, s several states, even, even in Lagos. Uh, but 
talk to Ross about whether you think it is too late for the, for the government to do something and what can be done. So let me quickly tell you something. We, we, as much as we like to involve um, the international community in some of our struggles, the, the, the best that can possibly happen is to highlight it on a global stage. We still have to locally fight for these things. I was nine years old when a policeman shot and killed um, a young guy on a, on a motorbike right in front of my dad's um, auto garage in Surulere. By the time we took him to the hospital and back, and he was, he was dead. Several years later, on my way to secondary school, this policeman had changed from the regular policeman into a mobile policeman. No punitive measure, nothing. There was no consequence for his action. I'm 41 years old now. It's 32 years of me witnessing such uh, police brutality. It doesn't change. Nigerians, we need to stand up and fight. There's nothing the U.S. or the U.K. or any of those countries will do for us when it has to do with human rights. Most that will possibly come is, oh, it, but one, but maybe an ex-president or leader is tried at international court. But it still doesn't change the fact that police brutality is still going on. We're still being harassed when we walk. It, it, it's just endless. And it's scary if, if as a child you're having to witness that and your children are seeing that as well. You know, So I feel that the Nigerian government needs to start listening and you know they need to adjust these things i do not see how difficult it is to to get um a, a conscious reorientation of the police force we need to do away with the me mentality of i mean if you are, if you are usually if you're around military men you hear them say things like bloody civilian there is no bloody civilian anywhere you know anybody putting on the uniform defending the country or protect uh providing um uh, protection to the citizens is doing that because they are being employed by the citizens. We are the ones who have employed them. So we need to get that reorientation into place. We need to understand that putting a koboko on your windscreen or having to flock people into submission is not the way to deal with people in 2021. People have to be respected. Nigerians have rights. They should have freedoms. We should be accorded the necessary respect that we truly deserve. It's appalling to see. I mean, I was watching videos today and it's, it's just... It's, it's taking us back again, you know, to exactly what we, it, it was that we were protested. And that's terribly sad. And I think our information of uh, minister and all the people who speak on behalf of the government need to take a step back, truly look at things, look at how they, how Nigeria was when they were growing up and how it is now. And, you know, try to run away from whatever repressive military rule, history we've had with the military, where they, we had to be, you know, cajoled and coerced into submission. It, it, it's, this is a democracy. It's, it's not acceptable. It's not. Mm. And hasn't this sort of spiraled into uh, Nigerians being, uh, I, I want to be careful with the word I use, but I will just go with the word mal maltreated abroad. For example, we've seen several videos, you know, out of this country where Nigerians are either being jailed illegally or being mal maltreated. And just recently, there was uh, a Nigerian diplomat who was also being harassed. Do you think that um, all of this treatment back home is giving a boost to how Nigerians are treated abroad um, in, in form of some some level of maltreatment yes absolutely i do not know those who are in charge of our uh, uh, foreign policies and what it is that they do but nigeria has any accorded respect anywhere you know except you do exceedingly well in academia or maybe you're in the employ of one of these countries and you're you know immensely contributing to the economy that's when you get the respect i mean when you see other citizens of other countries you know the basic respect that comes with humans humanity we don't get them and you, 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 you really can't blame them because, you know, the history, the, the information coming from our country shows that we don't, we're not even respected on our own soil. Look at how Nigerians are treated at the airport. When you're traveling, once you go into, when you go into the UK, there is a separate line for citizens, fast track. You come into Nigeria, there's a separate line for citizens, fast track, and Nigerians are having to endure long lines. So at what point do we really benefit from being Nigerians? Nothing. You know, so the, we we need. A, 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 I, I was thinking when this government came into power that the National Reorientation uh, Orientation Agency was going to be the most powerful. You know, um, um, or, um, parastatal. Uh, you know that we that that existed, but we've seen how you know disintegrated we've become over the last um, eight years. So I think it's 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 not too late. It's never too late to 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 correct whatever. Um, mm mistakes or uh, anomalies that may exist in how people should be rightfully treated so it's never too late but i just want to you know continue to talk to or employ nigerians not to give up um this this what we've seen today is no uh, is not new it's a way to suppress the resistance i've always been like this but we shouldn't give up 
All right, thank you so much for talking to us. Public Affairs Analyst Habib Salau. Thank you for having me.